genetic engineering is a vital part of biochemistry and genetics. With techniques like RNA interference, bacterial transformation, and antisense engineering, researchers can manipulate genes and thus their expression in the living organism. Genetic engineering starts in the nucleus of the living cell where coils of DNA wait to be transcribed and translated into the proteins that are necessary for all life. But DNA is only the beginning. The master code never leaves the nucleus of the cell. Instead, as you probably know, each relevant gene is copied, as needed, into a single-stranded format called messenger RNA. The messenger RNA, or mRNA, is the actual code that gets translated into protein. Genes express themselves through the proteins they code for. To express a gene, the relevant area of DNA must be transcribed into messenger RNA. First, the enzyme topoisomerase unwinds the DNA, so the enzyme helicase can separate the two strands. This unraveling exposes the nucleotides on the template strand to factors that can copy it into mRNA. A closer look at the separated strands of DNA reminds us that DNA is composed of four nucleotide bases, adenine, cytosine, thymine, and guanine, on a sugar backbone. Nucleotides A and B bind together, and nucleotides G and C are also attracted to each other. Thus, the strands of DNA are complementary, with each C bound to a G, and so on. These nucleotides make up the genetic code that gets translated into protein. One of these strands will serve as a template to synthesize a complementary strip of mRNA. mRNA reflects the nucleotides of DNA with one small change. Thymine is replaced by uracil in RNA. Let's put the DNA away as the mRNA goes on to code for protein in another region of the cell. Let's take a look at how amino acids are strung together into proteins using the code of the mRNA as a recipe. For this step, called translation, a transcription factor and transfer RNAs are required. These assemble the protein and code it for in the mRNA. Now recall that DNA is held together by attractions between the complementary nucleotides on each strand. These attractions are in the form of hydrogen bonds. The DNA has to be unwound and unzipped to expose the nucleotides. Also remember that DNA is complementary. One strand is the template or sense strand. The other is the antisense strand. If we know the sequence of one strand of DNA, we can predict the corresponding sequence of the other. For example, C always binds to G, T always binds to A, and so on. So how do biochemists take advantage of these properties to genetically engineer organisms? One way is antisense engineering, a method of gene sequencing. First, researchers look at a target gene on the organism's genome. They study the particular sequence of the gene they wish to silence on the template strand, knowing that the mRNA that codes for the protein is synthesized from that strand. Because DNA and RNA are complementary, researchers can infer from the template what sequence the mRNA would have, and so they create a sequence, shown here in green, that is perfectly complementary to that mRNA. This antisense mRNA is introduced into a cell that has already made some mRNAs in anticipation of making some proteins. Let's watch. The antisense mRNA bound to the legitimate mRNA. Note that the translation factors cannot get at the mRNA to make proteins. Remember that a complex has to be separated in order to read the nucleotides. The researchers have successfully stopped the gene from making that particular protein. As long as they introduce antisense mRNA, which is attracted to and binds to the legitimate RNA mRNA, the gene cannot code for protein. The gene has been silenced. Twisted, twisted.